and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you can feel the anxiety the feeling the hidden fears and all that when somebody knows that the pagans of Mecca not only up against their life but there was an announcement that to bring the Prophet وسلم, dead or alive and people were sent after him at that moment you can think about the condition of the heart of <coughs> Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, how afraid he was and what was his condition that is what described in this ayah of the Holy Quran and in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared to the people to the humankind you know if you don't help him فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already helped Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was you know he was kicked out by the non-believers from Mecca and he was forced to go to Medina here a key word I want you to understand every one of you that the approval of the Khilafah of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq ta'ala anhu can be understood with these words where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Thaniyathnayn the second of the two what is the meaning? the second of the two here in command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the one who will convey the last and final message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his journey of the lifetime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu to be his companion and the word companion with his name is mentioned here in the Holy Quran after Thaniyath Nain the second of the two is Huma Fil Ghan when they were in the cave and the history is our witness nobody else was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the cave Thawr when he was migrating to Medina now is the Yaqulu li sahibihi and remember the time when he says to his companion now Every Sahabi is a companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu is saying to his companion, is yaqulu li sahibihi, the companion of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, according to the glorious words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not be grieved like a child who is afraid on his or her life, and all of a sudden sees the father is coming. Oh, my father is there. Oh, now I'm, I'm, you know. Although it's a very small example. But think about the anxiety and the fears of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this word and this word was in the Holy Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it the way he told to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu لا تحزن إن الله معنا Do not be grieved Allah with us see so what happened with these words there were four results according to the Holy Quran the first one is فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ 
the tranquility descended upon him. Now here Mufassirin say that this Sakina came to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Some others say it came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the other Mufassirin say that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was already with the tranquility. He did not his connections and his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not require somebody to tell don't worry Allah is with us so that was the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for them sakina and tranquility and then وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودِ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا and Allah supported Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the forces which uh, with these you know the uh, rest of the human being cannot even see them you could not see them those were the forces that was the second وَجَعَلَ كَلِمَةَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُ السُّفْلَى And those who were boasting from among the pagans that we are going to get him dead or alive, you know, their boasting were failed because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was made low. They came to the mouth of the gate of the cave but they could not see they could not see you know as you will know in a minute from the hadith that they could not they had to stand if they would have seen down they would have seen prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but allah has the power not let anybody to make any kind of movement which may go against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and eternally wa kalimatullahi hiyal uliya you know and the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be upper but in this verse we are listening and we are repeating the glorious words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have a duty and responsibility because after Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is going to be no other Prophet so our duty and responsibility is to provide that support financially, <coughs> materially, physically, emotionally socially in every possible way and if we don't do that yastabdil qawman ghayrakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 47 last verse that Allah will replace you with another group of the people who will not be ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ وَمْثَالَكُمْ like you so the commitment has to come from us now I'm taking you to the hadith of Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu who says that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu has spoken to me telling me the story of the migration he said that I said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while we were in the cave that if any one of them when they were all there you know at the entrance of the cave and Abu Jahl the father of the ignorance you know he was calling Oh Muhammad, come out, we'll take you alive. All those and other people were surrounded. What happened? You know that I'm kaboot. The, the web, you know, which was, and the pigeons which gave, you know, the story. I don't want to go into the detail the story. They realize that they cannot go. Because this spider web is not even broken. If somebody enters that, it will be broken. So he, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq says, 
if any one of them only looks at his feet, he will be able to see us. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Abu Bakr, what do you think of the two people? The third of whom is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim has reported this saying that the power of the words of Allah not only the glorious words in the Quran but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we are not only two here there is a third one who has the power of everything who is the source of power and when you are connected with the source of power you don't have to worry about anything you go to surah number 92 see there according to the mufassirin and they have consensus ijma that these verses of the Holy Quran and as you know the application of the verses of the Holy Quran is of two kind one is immediate application and the other one is later which is which apply to the entire humankind but the incident which took place about which the verses were revealed they have the specific application so the Holy Quran in Surah Al you know wal layl idha yasurah al layl Surah number 92 you read وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَطْقَى الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى وَمَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجْزَى إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى There is a consensus that these verses were revealed in favor of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu speaking about his wealth speaking about his taqwa speaking about his donation speaking about his good deeds even before Islam and all of them illa bitiqa'a wajhi rabbih al-a'la for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, so what happened? When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was making a fundraising, he was the only person. One hundred percent of his wealth he brought to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was speaking about other people, he said, I have repaid the debts of every single person who gave me any kind of debt, except Abu Bakr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. Why? Because Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, consider my wealth as your wealth. You don't even have to take the permission. He spend it the way you want to spend. That was the one that he was spending that money and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran. We have many other verses but we don't have times. So let me stop here. We'll continue inshallah next week. There is a uh, dua uh, request for brother Yahya. May Allah grant him a speedy recovery. Amen. We also have a very important topic to speak about. Muhammad Mursi the only elected, democratically elected president of Egypt was killed by those Zionist agents and unfortunately we have many of them in the Muslim world nowadays who are working for shaitan and becoming the disciples of shaitan. Nowhere in the world a, pres a president of a country 
who is elected by the people will be treated the way he was treated in the prison to the extent that he you know could not bear and he collapsed and he died but it wasn't the natural death it was the murder of that uh, you know president uh, who was only trying to help the humanity by bringing the truth of islam that when islam is spread in the whole world their slogan was only one thing justice justice and justice they brought the justice to the world and as a result allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them the kind of peace which the humanity had never seen after that era which was run by those people who were going at every country of the world and the people of those countries with open arms receiving them and where they did not go they were requested to come in order to relieve them from those oppressive regimes so they brought that justice they did not work for the self glory they worked to help the humanity and this individual was trying to do simply that thing but obviously the forces of evil and as they did not allow the president who was democratically elected in algeria to continue they did not allow morsi as well and they will continue not to allow unless we muslims allow ourselves to connect with each other and to establish the kind of unity which is required <coughs> the unity among our hukam and rulers and among the people so therefore throughout the world the salatul janaza ala al ghaib was performed for you know rais mursi and inshallah we will do that immediately after friday prayer uh, uh muti i will lead the prayer because according to uh, hanafi school of thought salatul janaza is for the kifaya and for the kifaya means it is sufficient if one group of people has performed for the entire muslim ummah but other fuqaha allow that and those of us who are hanafi they can follow another imam so that's why i requested mutiya to lead the prayer and we will conclude with a dua inshallah and salatul janaza is three things realization that the source of life and death is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what we read in the dua allahumma aghfir li hayyina the second thing realization and endorsement that all the prophets and messengers have conveyed their message so we say assala ala rasul after the second takbir you know and after the third takbir you say dua for the deceased and that is the third one that we all collectively pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place him in the high rank in jannah and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide each and every one of us to bring the changes that are required in our day to day life so we can have a solidarity and we can have unity and we can have one voice everywhere in the world May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to connect ourselves in the light of his glorious words as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did with his communities aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sayyir almuslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwal ghafurur rahim Allahumma الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما امرت واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ارغاما لمن جحد به وكفر واشهد ان سيدنا 
ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة أجمعين والتابعين وتبع التابعين وصل في الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين إلى يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المؤمنين اللهم وفق كام المسلمين إلى كل ما تحبه وترضاه من القول والعمل يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموال إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا 